Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, this nor'easter is underway now, and I uh, just want to say right off the bat, if you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. The subscription is absolutely free, and you uh, get notified every time a new video goes up. And I welcome you, and please participate in the conversation. Uh, I, I, I love the engagement. Okay, I have the first casualty of the uh, <clears throat> nor'easter in that my pool cover collapsed, so it's going to stay collapsed until this is over with. And uh, already seeing wind gusts of 40 miles an hour or more occurring along some coastal areas. But let me just go over what's going on here in terms of uh, warnings. We've got high wind warnings up uh, for all of the New Jersey coast. Uh, we also have coastal flood warnings up for the New Jersey coast. And those high wind warnings extend to New York City, surrounding counties of New Jersey, across Long Island and through southern Connecticut. And we have coastal flood warnings up also for Long Island and for back over to New York Harbor and both north and south shore. Uh, inland areas, we have uh, wind advisories and we've got winter weather advisories up for northwest New Jersey in the Hudson Valley along and north of Route 84 and on northward from there and in Connecticut north and west of Route 84. Uh, in northeastern Pennsylvania, we have uh, advisories up for a few of the counties, but along the the counties that line the New York state border and going up on the other side of that, we have winter storm warnings up. And that includes places like Binghamton, Elmira, uh, uh, what is that, Cornell, Ithaca, Oneonta. So those places up into the Hudson Valley and in areas of the south uh, includes uh, all those counties there in northern Pennsylvania. This is going to be a heavy, a heavy wet snow for inland areas that get into it. Um, and, and sleet too. So this is a tough, you know, it's going to be tough to figure out in terms of somebody's going to wind up with next to nothing. Somebody's going to wind up with a few inches. Somebody's going to wind up with a few more inches. Uh, you're just going to have to let it play out. There's a, too much too much fluidity and, and liquidity in the forecast situation that um, if you're expecting some sort of specific number, it's just, just not going to happen. So we've got gusts already up into the 30s to, and low 40s over Long Island, up and down the New Jersey coastline. We're seeing gusts uh, some of these stations, by the way, are just inland, so the, the stations uh, that are on the coast I don't have here, but they, they probably could easily be every bit of 10, 10 miles an hour higher than the gust of 37, uh, gust of 47, uh, 33 down uh, in inland Cape May. So you know, the beaches, it could e easily be running already like 40 to 50 uh, in some of the gusts. And we've got this hurricane force wind warning up for the coastal waters. Okay, so let's take you through the models today. Um, because really now at this point, we're just kind of watching to see how it all plays out. And, it, you know, the, the NAMS kind of has the same story uh, with the uh, low uh, coming out uh, across uh, North Carolina, it redevelops east of the North Carolina coast and then lifts north, northeastward or northward from there to off the New Jersey coast by Tuesday morning. And then just kind of sits there and takes its sweet time as it moves away and weakens and goes goodbye. So we should finally see weather conditions starting to improve during the day Tuesday and into Tuesday night and Wednesday. And, you know, these um, these systems are always fun and never easy. So we'll um, <clears throat> take a look. I want to show you, by the way, in terms of the upper air, because this is important. Um, how much has changed in terms of the upper air? This is how the system looks in the upper layers of the atmosphere, this wrapped up low that's cut off from the main jet stream. And it just kind of takes its time and lifts up northeastward. And one of the, the big differences in the model runs over the last couple of days over what we saw late last week is that this kind of this remains its own entity as it lifts uh, north, northeastward and northward. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we saw this colder look uh, with, with with this feature because of the strong upper air presence of the cyclone. This is a cold cyclone, and as it remains rather intense, some of that cold air is uh, getting pretty much transferred from the top of the atmosphere down, uh, and we're getting going to get dynamic cooling is what we call it um, across uh, inland areas in New Jersey and in southeastern New York and in, in northern Pennsylvania. So that's why we can get snow out of something like this, even though we're not sitting in, in, in a uh, cold air mass. So you, you can see how uh, that system stays pretty much intact. And uh, we'll uh, take a look at the GFS from last night because the new one's not out yet. And you know it follows the same idea. And I'll touch a little bit on the long range with this, by the way, because I did notice something um, in a quick look before. 
So this is our nor'easter. You know, it's pretty much the same idea. The, the surface low on the GFS is probably a little further offshore uh, than uh, on the NAM, which is a little more tucked in. You can see the area of snow and sleet to the north, and then that lifts up to the northeast and gone goodbye. So uh, in terms of, of what this is going to mean snowfall-wise, let's look uh, at what the models say. And, you know, I think the NAM still has this, this thing about bringing snow pretty far to the south. The GFS is, is, you know, it's not that far south. I mean, it's not, it isn't that far north from the coastline in terms of snowfall. I mean, it's producing some rather sizable amounts, uh, even in the northeastern Pennsylvania. I would just caution that this is based on a 10 to 1 ratio. So given how warm the atmosphere is, I think you want to conservatively at least cut it in half. So it says to me that, you know, in, in, in areas of northwest New Jersey, southeastern New York, and northwest Connecticut, it, it could be every bit of a coating to a few inches of snow and sleet. And then maybe as you go way up in these elevation-driven, because this is all going to be elevation-driven, you're going to wind up with amounts that are going to be higher. And um, we'll look at the NAM because the NAM is a little more aggressive. And, you know, look how far south it's got the, it, the snow, almost down into southern New Jersey and uh, does uh, also into New York City and Long Island and throughout much of the coastal Connecticut. Uh, at this point, the models have done what they've done, so I just want to see how it plays out. I'll be curious as far as that goes. Now, let's go back to the GFS because I did see something in the long range. And if you remember back um, a couple of days ago, I, I was talking about uh, the end of the month as a possibility. And let's give you the full U.S. view. And then we're going to see what's going on. Now, just because the map has something doesn't mean it's going to happen. But uh, the GFS doesn't have too much going into this weekend. But you can start to see uh, low pressure here uh, develops. Uh, along about uh, Monday, J J June, uh, Jan uh, June, January 30th, and, and it, it takes a low and develops it, but it moves it out to the northeast. I just kind of want to watch this because, you know, now it's put a system back up uh, on the map, and, you know, maybe it's seeing it's starting to see something different. We're going to look at the upper air with this and take a wider view. And you can see, by the way, it does have a trough. It does have actually a pretty decent-looking trough, I think the problem is, as we look at it, uh, you can see that trough swings around. There's only so much room, and there's still another system upstream here, so that's kind of playing into it. So uh, we're going to have to see what, what future runs, uh, what they do with this. Actually, when you look at it at this point, uh, at, at, the, at uh, the upper air at 150 hour, it, 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 it looks pretty, looks like it could be impressive. It swings around, but it never can go... It never can start to wind up something here because of the fact that there's another system here upstream. So there's only so much room in the atmosphere for something to happen. Uh, we'll widen a little bit more. And there we go. I mean, you can see it there on, on, on the map that what's happening. Because here's that trough. Uh, this is again for the end of the month, but you've got these upstream systems, so you know there's only so much room uh, for uh, development. If you've got too many systems too close together, you're just not going to have the room for it. And then you know it swings another trough into the east, and then yet another one comes down. The one theme that that seems to hold through the entire forecast period is you do have general troughing in the east, and you do have a ridge in the west. And actually, a little bit of a ridge out in the Atlantic coming back over the top at Greenland. So, uh, you know, you do have um, a wintry look at least through the first eight days of February. Beyond that, we don't know. So, I think um, going forward, uh, we're going to have, I think we're going forward, we're going to have ch more chances. I mean, whether they wind up being nor'easters or not remains to be seen. But uh, in terms of the standpoint of wintertime weather, I think there are going to be uh, some opportunities lying ahead. How they play out, nobody knows. I don't know. Anybody who says they know is pretending. There's, there's no way to know. Okay? But I do know that this video is coming to an end. So uh, be sure, uh, latest uh, posts on the Nor'easter on the website, meteorologistjochaffee.com. New York City specific being handled by Angry Ben, uh, meteorologist Ben Scott on nycweathernow.com. Uh, we've also got Long Island. Uh, on uh, weatherlongisland.com, uh, my app and my forecasts, uh, 99 cents a month. 
Uh, you can download it for Apple or Android. Uh, link up on the card that's coming up now. And uh, if you've stayed with this video at this long, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Absolutely free. Helps me out with Google. And you get notifications anytime a new video is up. So everybody have a great day and have a safe Monday out there.